Hello. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the C and D scales of a calculator to multiply and to divide. First, we need to look at where they're located on the slide rule, and we need to learn a little bit about how to read them. You'll find that on almost all slide rules near the bottom, you will see a D scale and a C scale. The D scale will be stationary, and the C scale will slide along the slide of the slide rule, but they are otherwise identical. You'll notice as you follow them from left to right that the C and the D scales start with a 1, and then there's a small 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then there's a large 2. And if we continue along, we find that there is a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9, and finally a 1 again. And that each of these intervals is further subdivided into smaller bits. Uh, the number of smaller bits varies according to where you are on the scales. Because there's more distance between the large 1 and the large 2, it's possible to divide them up pretty finely, and in fact, even to label the tenths. So you might read this as a 1, and this as a 2, and so then working away from the 1 to the 2, you'd have 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.3 and so on. The other intervals are not labeled in that way because they're not quite big enough for that, but they're similarly subdivided. So if you look at the interval from 1 to 2, you'll find that that's divided into tenths and those are further divided into tenths. So between 1 and 2, it's actually by hundredths, each of the tiniest tick marks. Between 2 and 4, they're divided into fifths. So we have tenths here, and then each of those tenths is divided further into fifths. And then between 4 and the right end of the scale, you'll find that the tenths are further divided into halves, and that just reflects the fact that since you have less room, you have to uh, not divide things quite so. The first thing we need to do before we start multiplying and dividing is to learn how to locate various numbers on the slide rule. So let's say we wanted to locate the number 1.56. I know the first digit is a 1, so I know I need to be over in this part of the scale. And I'll zoom it in a little bit. And the next digit is 5, so I'll locate the 5 here. So now I have 1.5, uh, the cursor right along the, the major division there for 5. And finally, my last digit, my third digit, is a 6. And so from 1.5 to 1.6 is divided into tenths. So I can sort of scoop my way over here until I am at 1.56. We'll discuss powers of 10 momentarily when we start multiplying and dividing, but it's worth noticing that this would also represent 156 or 0 0.156 or any number in which the first three non-zero digits were a 1, a 5, and a 6 in that order. Uh, let's practice on a couple more. Suppose we wanted to locate 3.95. So we would work our way to the interval between 3 and 4, and then we would locate the 3.9, and finally we need to be halfway between the 3.9 and the 4, which puts us right about there. So that would be the location of 3.95 on the C and the D. Maybe one more example. If we wanted 8.16, we would go out to the right end of the scale, and we would locate the 8 pretty easily, and then 8.1 would be here, and then the next division of that same size would be 8.2, so we need to be a little bit to the right of this midpoint here, which is 8.5. And it starts to get a little bit speculative, uh, but I would say that maybe right about there is 8.16. It's just to the right of 8.15. Once we know how to read the scales, we can begin to use them to multiply and divide. And we'll start with a really simple example. Suppose we want to multiply 2 by 3. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this far left number 1, this one on the left edge is called the index, and actually the one on the right edge is called the index as well. And the first thing we're going to do when we multiply is move that index on the C scale 
to the first of our factors on the D scale. So if I want to multiply 2 by 3, I'm going to move my slide until that index is just right above the 2. And this sometimes takes a little bit of jockeying. But there we are. And then if I want to multiply 2 by 3, I take the cursor and I locate 3 on the D scale. And I look right below, sorry, on the C scale. And I look right below it and I see a 6. So again, I have aligned the index on the C with the first factor on the D. I've moved the cursor to the second factor on the C, and then immediately below I read the product. So 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, as you might hope and expect, this works in the other direction as well. If I wanted to multiply 3 by 2, I should also get 6. And so I can slide the index to 3, the C index to 3 on the D scale pretty well. And then I can look over at the C and locate 2 with my cursor and below it is the 6. So uh, reversing the order of the factors in this process as you would hope and expect doesn't in any way change the result. Let's try a little more ambitious example. Suppose we want to multiply 2.9 by 0.58. <coughs> so I'll try to locate 2.9 and that's actually not very far from where we just were at 3. So I'll take the index on the C, I'll bring it to 2.9 on the D, try not to let it slip, and then I want to multiply that by 0.58. So I'm going to try to locate 0.58 on the C, and I discover that it's off to the right. What am I going to do? Well, I'll move the other index on the C so that it lines up with the 2.9. So, bring that over like so, and then I'll try to locate 0.58 on the C, and I find that now I can locate it. 0.58 is right here. And then I read down below, and I see that I'm in the ones, so I've got a one, and then a six, and finally, it looks as though that last digit is about an 8. So I have 1, 6, 8. And then the question is, okay, what does that do for me? Well, now you have to bring in a little bit of your own knowledge of how numbers work in order to get a final result. So 2.9 times 0.58, very roughly speaking, is half of 3, which would be 1.5. So if I look at these digits and I see that they're 1, 6, 8, I know that it's not 168 or 0 0.00168. I know that it's got to be about 1.68 because I know that it has to be roughly 1.5. Let's do another couple of examples of multiplication and we'll start with 18 by 3.4. So I will align the index on the C to 18 on the D and then I will locate 3.4 with my cursor on the C, and I look below, and I see that I'm at 6, 1, something. Something's maybe about a 2. That's a little bit speculative, um, but it looks like it's about 6, 1, 2. Now, this is 18 times 3. That's roughly 20 times 3, or about 60. So 6, 1, 2 in this instance must be 61.2 rather than 612 or some other number that starts with those three digits. Uh, if you don't quite believe in the two, then you can just round to the nearest uh, integer and you can call it 61. If we were multiplying 18 by 34, it would look exactly the same, except that now we would have to say, well, it's about 20 times about 30, that's about 600. So our 612 must be 612, and again, if you don't quite believe that third digit, you could round it to the nearest 10, and you could call it 610. Let's look now at division, which, not surprisingly uh, on the slide rule, looks to be the reverse of multiplication. So if I wanted to divide, let's say, 124 by 8.1, I would start by locating 124, but since the way we end a multiplication is to have the cursor on the D. That's how we're going to start a division. So I'm going to look for 1 and then 2 and then that final subdivision of a 4. 
and then I'm going to bring the 8.1 on the C over into alignment with the cursor and I'm going to read my result uh, on the D where it aligns with the index on the C. So since we begin multiplications by aligning the index with a factor, it only makes sense that that's where we end up finishing a division and it looks like it's about 1, 5, 3. And so now I have to decide what that means. Uh, 124 divided by 8.1 is roughly 100 divided by 10, roughly 10. And so when I see 153, I know that that's about 15.3 and not 1.53 or 15,300 or any of the other things that it, that it could potentially be uh, beginning with those digits. If I were to divide 124 by 0.81, that would be very roughly 100 divided by 1. It would be very roughly 100. And so uh, looking at this position on the slide rule in that light, I would know that it would have to be about 1.53 rather than some other value beginning with those digits. Final example, let's divide 93 by 7.4. So I will locate 93 on the D with my cursor. It's right about there. And then I'm going to move to uh, 7.4 on the C in alignment with the cursor. And then we'll see where the index on the C hits the D. It looks like it's in the neighborhood of about 126. And so I need to decide what that means. And 93 divided by 74 is, again, roughly 100 divided by 10th, roughly 10. And so if I have 126, I know it's 12.6 and not 126 or some other such thing. And that concludes our look at multiplying and dividing on the slide.